Hello, I'm Beverly Gray, and since my earliest memory, I felt a deep connection to the natural world, especially the world of wild food and medicinal plants. Now, in my life as a herbalist, author, teacher, and creator of herbal medicines, I share this passion with others. So join me as we explore the healing world of plants on this edition of The Boreal Herbal. It's autumn in the Yukon. We've just had our first frost and the boreal berries are ready. So in today's show, we're going to go out picking wild berries and then we're going into the kitchen to make medicinal cough syrup. Let's go picking berries. Oh, there's an abundance of berries this year. There's so many delicious berries that people can gather and uh, I would say like blueberries, moss berries, high bush cranberries are great at this time of year. Some of the tools that you need for gathering berries are, well I've got this big bucket but uh, you know you could use a small yogurt or honey container. I always like to have a lid because you know you fill them up and, and you don't want to spill them so you put your lid on. Or you could also use like a, a you know just a regular plastic Ziploc bag and I actually always bring a pair of scissors along because you never know what you're going to find in terms of other boreal herbs that you may want to collect. So come with me, we're going to gather some boreal berries. First up, rose hips. First up we have rose hips. They're an abundant plant in the Yukon. They grow in disturbed soils all over the place. Of course, in the summer, we see the beautiful uh, pink roses uh, blooming around the summer solstice. So now we're heading into the fall equinox. Time to pick these beautiful uh, uh, rose hips. Rosa acicularis is high in vitamin C. Actually, it's, it's the highest amount of vitamin C of any rose hip in the world. That's why it's going to be great in our cough syrup today. It's also very antimicrobial, which means it's great for uh, colds and flus. So great for, as a prevention. You can use it as a tea. Uh, of course, love making fruit leather and uh, rosehip jelly, things of that nature. I love making a rosehip chutney as well. Delicious. When you're picking rose hips, you need to be careful for the rose thorns. Uh, but if you do get a little rose thorn, just uh, mash up the uh, rose hip, put it on, and uh, it'll help draw the uh, thorn out and heal your wound. Rose hips are truly a heart smart food. They're really high in bioflavonoids, and so they're excellent for the blood. Lots of vitamins and minerals, including iron. So. When we make the syrup today, it'll be great for coughs, but also great for the blood as well. This is a typical environment for common juniper. Juniper is communist, which we find in the Yukon. I always love to come out picking them, but the interesting thing about juniper berries is that the berries only come out every three, three years. Actually, juniper is an evergreen plant, and the berries are, are cones, so they're not really berries. Uh, they're quite spicy. Uh, anybody who tastes, tastes a juniper berry realizes quite quickly that it tastes like one of their favorite alcoholic beverages. Gin. With juniper, I like to uh, keep a handful in my pocket when I'm traveling. I take them as my wild vitamin. I often think we're kind of a domesticated species and eating one wild berry a day keeps us wild at heart. Other than that, I use juniper for lots of different things. When I'm making wild game or any kind of wild fowl, I like to grind the berries up in a mortar and pestle and then use that as like a natural condiment. The medicinal aspects of juniper are that it's antiscorbutic, 
which means it's actually high in vitamin C and uh, it's a great digestive. So move over Beano. If you're using that when you're making sauerkraut or your beans, it's great for flatulence. So again, pop in a couple berries before you eat. Helps your whole digestive system just to help absorb your food to the maximum quality that you can. So when you're picking juniper berry, again, like the wild rose, these are very prickly. So just watch your fingers and uh, enjoy picking the wild blueberries. So as you'll notice here on the bush, there's some of the berries are blue and some are white. We want to pick the berries that are blue. The white ones will be ready next season. Also, you'll find that there's like a little white coating on each berry. You can wipe it off, but don't. It actually has a lot of natural yeast on it. So you could actually use the berries to help rise your bread. If you were making mead and you needed a natural yeast, you could use a few of the berries in your mead making. So it's got a lot of multi-uses. Juniper, it's gonna be great in this cough syrup. amazed at the abundance of wild cranberries that are here in the north. I love going for walks with my dog in the fall just because I can stop and pick berries. Cranberries are high in vitamin C and uh, they're an excellent source of protein as well. The little seeds inside of the berry um, are high in omega fatty acids. So it's actually quite rare to find protein in a berry. So collecting the wild cranberries, Vaccinium vitis itis, uh, which is in the Heath family, uh, from the forest floor is an excellent source of vitamins, minerals, and protein. They're also called lingonberries in Scandinavia, and uh, here in the Canada's north, we just called them wild cranberries. Some people mix them up with the Arctostaphylus uva ursi, bearberry, or which some people would call kinikinik. Uh, they're in the same plant family, but the difference is the berries uh, are certainly not as tasty on the Kinnikinnik or the Arctostaphylus uva ursi as they are in the uh, cranberries. Cranberries are so tasty and tart. Mm, I love to eat them. Many great medicinal properties to cranberries. Uh, excellent for use in allergies. You can make a tea uh, with it. Also great for urinary tract infections, just eating the berries, making a tea, making a syrup, actually even uh, using it in food is excellent in that way. Uh, it stops E. coli bacteria from adhering to the walls of the urinary tract. So it is a number one remedy. Not only can you use the berries, but you can also use the leathery leaves of the cranberry plant in a tea or in an alcohol tincture to help your body get rid of the bacterial infection. We just got in from berry picking where we picked a few different berries. We picked, of course, the wild rose hip. We picked the juniper berry and we picked the wild cranberry. So tart and delicious. There's four easy steps to making boreal herbal cough syrup. And the first step is to make a decoction. The second step is to reduce it down. The third step is to strain it. And the fourth is to preserve it. So let's get started. I've got the water boiling and I put a thousand ml of water in here and now I'm putting a half a cup of rose hips into the boiling water and then I'm adding a half a cup of juniper berries and then I'm adding a half a cup of the cranberries. So it's been about 20 minutes and uh, we've re reduced our decoction 
looks gorgeous, this bright red. And the reason we reduce it is because we want to pull out all the minerals and all the vitamins and the nutrients and the medicinal qualities from the berries. And it also makes it really tasty. So the next step that we do is once we have everything boiled is we strain it. So I'm going to strain the berries through a cheesecloth into a measuring cup. Look at that. God, that's gorgeous. It smells even better. And so once I get that strained, I should have about 500 mils of uh, liquid. So be careful if it's hot because you don't want to burn your hands. So I've strained this through the cheesecloth and honestly don't throw it away or compost it because this is great stuff. You can put it in uh, cookies, breads. I think it's really nice in smoothies as well. Or you can use it to make a uh, fruit leather, which is really quite wonderful. So now that we've got that strained, so I'm going to add some beautiful honey that I have here and I'm adding 500 ml. This happens to be 500 ml measured out. So I'll just pour it in. Honey has lots of different qualities on its own as well. Uh, it's antibacterial and it adds a preservation quality to the uh, syrup. So there we go. We've got that golden honey, the gold or elix golden elixir of honey added. And now we're going to add some brandy. So what the brandy does is it, uh, the alcohol in it really locks down the preservative. Still, when you're using the uh, cough syrup, it's suggested to keep it refrigerated, even though you have the honey and the brandy to preserve it. So here I'm putting 100 ml of brandy into this preparation. And I'm just going to give it a little stir. So this is a fairly thin cough syrup. If you want to make it a lot thicker, you could put it back on the heat and reduce it down even more. I don't really like to do that because I like to preserve the vitamins and minerals that are in the preparation. And when you use too much forceful heat, uh, what happens is you lose a lot of those to the steam. So it's all ready to be poured. And uh, I'm going to put it in this little uh, brown bottle that I have. Uh, using a, a colored glass is a good idea. And like I said, then refrigerating. Also, I like to put a label on there with uh, the name of the berries, where they were picked, and the date that I made the uh, remedy. That way you'll always know. So when you're looking through your refrigerator, you go, oh yeah, that's this year's. And uh, that it's nice and fresh. So I'll just pour that in. Look how beautiful that is. So you can use this for prevention of colds and flus and coughs. Or if you happen to get a cold or a flu or a cough or you feel something coming on, then absolutely take this as a preventative. Or uh, you could just take it uh, as a food as well. You could put it on your ice cream. Uh, you could put it on your yogurt in the morning. Or you could just take a spoonful every day for all the nutrients, nutrient value. So that's basically it. So come and visit me at my shop, Aroma Borealis, on the main street of Whitehorse, Yukon, or on my blog, beverlygray.com, or you could uh, pick up a copy of my book, The Boreal Herbal, and there's lots of great, healthful, herbal, boreal recipes in there. So until next time, I'm Beverly Gray. Thanks for joining me.